Hey, this is Carrie from Soundproofist, and I'd like to review some of the types of noise and the noise solutions, because I've seen some misinformation on the internet, and I don't want you to waste your money. First, different types of noise need different solutions, and sometimes you need to combine these solutions together to get the best results. So let's go through some of the main types of noise. Airborne noise is just what you think it is. It's sound that travels through the air. And sometimes you can block that noise with solid surfaces like walls, doors, and windows. Some examples of airborne noise include conversation, television, and distant traffic. Low frequency noise has a lot of bass or vibration in it. This kind of noise can travel long distances because it's not absorbed very well. Low frequency noise passes easily through walls and windows, and it ranges from about 10 hertz to 200 hertz. To give you an example, this is what 50 hertz sounds like. So what generates low frequency noise? Car and truck engines, helicopters and airplanes, gas-powered leaf blowers, wind turbines, subwoofers, appliances and machinery, and fireworks. Impact noise comes from direct impact on hard surfaces in your building. It's also known as structure-borne noise. This travels to other rooms, above, below, or adjacent to the impact. Some examples of impact noise are footfalls, doors and drawers, and hammering. So how do we measure noise? The loudness of a noise is measured in decibels. Even a quiet room has a baseline decibel reading. It's typically about 35 decibels. And anything over 85 decibels puts you in danger of damaging your hearing. So with decibels, lower is better. However, decibel levels don't tell you everything about a noise. A low frequency noise like a truck engine might have a decibel reading of 65, but two people having a pleasant conversation in the same room together might also register at 65 decibels. Which sound disrupts you the most? Which sound is the most likely to go through your walls? STC stands for Sound Transmission Class. This measures the effectiveness of a material in blocking noise. The higher the STC number, the better. So if a noise is 70 decibels, but your home isn't insulated, your walls might have an STC of 35, which means those other 35 decibels are still passing into your home. You can take steps to increase the STC of your walls or windows. There's also a measurement for impact noise reduction. It's called IIC, or impact insulation class. Again, a higher number is better. It means the material is more effective against impact noise. And with today's building codes, you need an IIC rating of 50 or higher. Most older buildings don't even reach that. Soundproofist covers this in another video about ceilings and floors. So now let's look at a few materials that might help you with your noise problem. First, there's sound absorption. It's when you dampen the noise inside a room or in a business to reduce the echo and the reverb that bounces from the hard surfaces. But Sound absorption in your home or business does not prevent noise from the outside from coming in. Don't disappoint yourself by adding sound panels in your room when you're actually trying to solve a problem with traffic noise coming in from the outside. Let's take a look at some of the materials that absorb sound. I put an icon next to them to indicate what type of noise they can reduce, if it's airborne, impact, low frequency, or a combination. Acoustic panels on walls or ceilings. Felt pads on the walls, but they also might work as a floor underlayment and help with impact noise. The same with cork tiles. We're talking about sound absorption right now, but sometimes cork is used for anti-vibration. Also, vertical gardens, rugs with pads, and upholstered furniture. These can all absorb airborne noise. Then there's soundproofing. That's when you reduce the outside noise that's coming in through your walls, ceilings, floors, or windows. You can also soundproof your space to prevent your noise from disturbing your neighbors. 
For example, if you're a musician or if you have a really great sound system. So here are some materials that help with soundproofing and how they might be effective. And remember, sometimes you have to combine a few of them together for the best results. Sound damp and drywall, like quiet rock or sound break. Concrete. And obviously, if you're trying to retrofit an existing home, you can't pour a huge slab of concrete onto your existing floor. But if you're building a new home or buying a home with a concrete floor already in it, you're going to have better noise control. Double drywall. We've covered this topic before on Soundproofist. This adds more mass, and if you use a viscous polymer like green glue between the two layers, it will help you reduce low-frequency noise in the wall. Insulation. This will help you with airborne noise. Double-pane windows also help to reduce airborne noise. And depending on how your home is built, if double-pane glass isn't enough, a plexiglass window insert might reduce the noise even further, especially if you're bothered by low-frequency noise. Weather stripping and caulk. Anytime you have gaps around the edges of a wall or a window, you should seal them, and preferably with something dense yet flexible. And also mass-loaded vinyl. This is a flexible sheet you put inside your wall, and it's most effective in combination with insulation material. It helps to mask airborne noise, but it might not be as effective with low-frequency noise. Just one more thing about insulation. We covered STC earlier, or how effective a material is at absorbing or blocking noise. So the STC of an uninsulated wall is about 35 STC. And that's about the equivalent of what a room sounds like when it's totally quiet and with no outside noise coming in. Fiberglass insulation increases that STC by maybe four points to 39 STC. Rock wool bats are better. They increase the STC to about 45. And spray foam. Don't ever use spray foam to fill a large cavity like a wall or a ceiling. It's not the right material for the job, and it only increases the STC by two points to 37. Use spray foam to fill a gap around a pipe or a gap in a window frame, but not for acoustic insulation. Okay, now we're on to decoupling. It's when you separate the walls or ceilings or flooring from the building frame to reduce how much impact noise or low frequency noise passes through the structure. Many homes are built like barns. They're just a lot of wood hammered together. When you decouple a surface, you keep some of these parts from touching by using materials that reduce noise transmission. However, this probably requires some reconstruction. The best time to decouple is with new construction, but very few contractors do this unless the architect already has it in the plans. So how is this done? With resilient channels and clips, or staggered wall studs, or joist isolators, or joist tape, or floating floors. And finally, we have anti-vibration solutions. It's when you isolate noisy mechanical equipment from floors, walls, and ceilings to keep the noise from going into the structure and to other rooms. Some buildings have mechanical equipment that makes noise inside the building frame. This includes fans, air conditioners, washing machines, dishwashers, stereo speakers, and exercise equipment. One way to prevent this noise is to use anti-vibration pads. These materials need to be inserted directly at the source of the vibration. And this includes pads made with cork and rubber treads and rubber isolation mats. So I hope this helps you in identifying the kinds of noise you're dealing with in your building and some of the ways that you might be able to reduce the problem. In conclusion, different types of noise require different treatments. Most structures weren't built for noise control. You're not alone. Many people suffer from noise issues. And yes, there are things you can do about it. For more information, see our resources or listen to our podcasts at soundproofist.com. Sure.